Hi, whether you are brand new to Mid-Continent Public Library or you have had a library card for years, chances are you might be more familiar with our local branches than you are with our website. And so today we are going to take a tour of our website so you can be just as comfortable with that. Hi, I'm Terry, and I'm one of the Consumer Technology Specialists for Mid-Continent Public Library. And let's get started on that tour. To get to our website, you're going to open the browser of your choice, and then in the address bar, type mymcpl.org and press Enter. From there, you will be taken to our home page. And you'll know it's ours because in the upper left, there is a logo for Mid-Continent Public Library. Now let's look at the uh, main pieces of this home page. Starting at the top, we have tabs for the different subsites that you may find interesting and helpful. Below that and to the right of the logo, we have our main navigation bar where you're going to spend probably the majority of your time as you uh, look at our website. Below that, we have a search bar that lets you search all of the contents of the library, our books, our movies, our blogs, our articles, whatever form that it takes it will help you find that information by simply doing a search here. Below that, we do have a gold bar that right now is still reflecting the restrictions um, that certain counties and cities are placing because of mask orders. And hopefully this bar will shrink as the mask orders diminish. But until then, we want everyone safe. And so we have information about how the branches are observing those orders. Below that, we have two tag, um, tabs. The first one is featured, and it simply says that from here on down, we will be able to see the featured information on our homepage. And then to the right of that, we have a blogs tab. Now, as we go down further, we will see what we call cards. Now, whether you have a computer, a tablet, or a phone, you will be able to use our website very easily. It's just that if you have a smartphone and a, maybe a small one at that, you may only see one card or two cards at a time. Whereas if you have a larger tablet or a computer, it's very possible you'll see four cards going across the screen. These cards are updated regularly. Some of them are permanent and some of them, well, go away as soon as an event takes place, for example. So as we look at this first row, the first one on the left is I want to. This is a permanent card. It rarely, if ever, changes because it allows you to access the digital card catalog, get eBooks and e-audiobooks, Go to WorldCat to see if um, another library has a resource that we don't have. Um, you are able to get a library card and you're able to ask librarians questions and then there are more frequently asked questions if you click on this button. To the right of this though, we have very seasonal kinds of cards that as soon as the event takes place, new cards will replace them. And then to the right, we have a blogs card that whereas its location remains static, the information is updated every time a new blog is added to our blogs section. As we scroll down, you'll see that we have some little small cards that are called promotional cards. Now, these also take you to places and to uh, online resources that are in our website, but they, you'll notice, have, say, a logo or a picture and very few words compared to the larger cards that probably have pictures and words to, uh, as well. Going on down then, we can see that there is um, a card that has virtual events and it updates as the events take place and some other um, promotions for programs and uh, different events. 
some online learning resources here in the lower left, and some uh, opportunities to get more involved with the library. At the very bottom of our homepage, we have a banner that shows new books that are being added to our collection. And then at the bottom, in this kind of white section, we have some links that you'll see at the bottom of most of our web pages. They're in three columns and they are about the services that we provide, uh, information about Mid-Continent Public Library, and then just some help and frequently asked questions, actually the answers to those questions that you may want to ask. And then we have some buttons that let you talk to us um, you can subscribe to weekly newsletters that are about a particular branch or about, um, say, different kinds of programs that you're interested in. Here is another way to get a library card and then another way to donate. At the very bottom of this section, it also gives you links to social media and to how we can relate to you through social media. I've come back up to the top of the home page just so that we can look to the right of the featured tab and take a few minutes to look at the blogs page. Now we do have a video that explains the blogs page in a lot of detail, but let's look quickly to see the elements on this page. And as you can see, we still have that red search bar going across the top. And then below that blogs tab, we have something else. We have a blue filter bar. Now the blue filter bars don't appear on every web page, but they do appear where they fit the best. And the filter bars are there so that you can hone in and see just the information that you want because there's a lot of information out there, and so this lets you narrow down your search a little bit. So to find blogs, you could type a keyword, for example. You could select from subjects, if that was what you would like to do. But when you use this filter bar, once you put in the information you want to put in, be sure to click the update button so that the filtering does update. Now as we scroll down on this page we can see that there is just a wide variety of the different topics that are available because we have a lot of people on staff who write these blogs. Right now what is currently trending is the fact that Missouri has a statehood in anniversary, a very big one here, and so you may see some Missouri related blogs. Um, you can see that we have an event coming up and so there's even a blog about it. And then the Olympics are also trending right now. And so you may see some uh, cards that have something to do about the Olympics. Uh, you will also see, because we are still uh, working uh, on a big project uh, where all of our libraries are getting some sort of a facelift, some of the buildings are really being uh, just renovated and rebuilt, and so you may see a card about that. Uh, certainly here is a technology-related card and blog. Um, here is something to do with teens. So this is our youth department's uh, contribution and our genealogy um, section also has some information here about Pennsylvania published archives. Down at the bottom you'll notice a strip running across that shows us that there are a whole lot of pages that we haven't seen but you could navigate through and see more and more blogs um, as you have time and then as promised at the bottom we have that kind of white section that has the services about us and help and FAQs. I have scrolled back up to the top of the blogs page, but now let's go back to our home page just for reference. And to do that, we'll go to our Mid-Continent Public Library logo and click, and that will take us back to the home page. To the right of that logo, we have our main navigation bar, and let's look at these entries um, that you may be interested in. We'll start with books, movies, and music and click it, and you'll see that it has five tabs. 
the middle three here, read, watch, listen, are arranged very similarly um, as you look at their web pages. You'll notice that the featured tab also has a blue filter bar, but now that filter um, really readily reflects books, movies, and music. So while you could type in a keyword, you could also select different formats that you're interested in. You might decide that you want to see when materials were added. So it might be that you feel like you've seen everything up to a certain point and now you want to see the new stuff. You might search by a title if, or an author or a keyword or a series or a subject. And then for audiences, you might decide that you want to select adult, children, or teens. Just remember that after you select those filters, be sure to click the update button. Now, as I scroll down, you'll see that we have banners running across for our new books, our new movies, our new audio books, our new music. And then we have some cards that help you with apps, for example, OverDrive that you could download or actually use uh, with your browser so that you could read a digital book or listen to an a, um, e-audio book or with OverDrive. You could even watch um, a movie, but what else? We could scroll down some more. Now, these two cards at the bottom uh, right especially are of interest, I think. Based on the book, it's just really fun. Uh, you may have someone in your house, or me, you may have even done this, where you had a book report to do, so you read the book, but then you knew it also was a movie, so you could watch the movie and maybe uh, have a better understanding of what that book was saying. Um, uh, by the uh, same token, you might have seen a movie and said, wow, I wonder if that has a book, because sometimes the books are even better than the movie. Well, here we have a listing of books that were made into movies and movies that were based on books, and you are certainly welcome to come in here and see what uh, is reflected through our collection. The juvenile series and sequels is uh, really important for kids. They find an author, or they find a book that they really like, and then they want to know what's next in the series. And so this helps kids find a book. We also have the card to the left of that that says, well, here is a listing of the book groups. And most branches do have book groups that you can join. It looks like we have quite a few mystery book groups, but there are also some other groups that are somewhat generic. Some meet during the day, some meet in the evenings, so be sure to check those out. And then, of course, we're always welcome to help you uh, find the book that you want to find. Now I'm going to go back up to the top because now we're going to look at the Read tab and click on it. And again, this is going to have a very similar kind of layout as the watch and listen tabs as well. So we'll start at the top and this has a banner running across. Now the banner is seasonal, so it will change in a few months, but right now it's summer, so it says to beach their own and it's all about reading. And then as we scroll down, it has some cards that will take you to resources and to um, different apps that may help you uh, in your reading process. And even on the left here, find your next read and it even lets you kind of pick a category, a genre of the books that you might want to find. Always then at the bottom of these tabs, you're going to find a banner that in this case has a listing of some of the new books that are in our collection. I'm going to go back up to the top, click the Watch tab, and as promised at the top we have a banner. Again, it is seasonal, and this is something uh, that you might want to watch, so it's probably movies and TV shows. looks mostly like it's movies. And then as we scroll down, the very first card here is to browse movies and TV and find some things that you would like to watch. And then as we scroll down again, just more cards um, that have to do with helping you use those resources to the, your best ability. And then a banner at the bottom that lists the new movies that we have available. Well, let's go back up to the top. With the Listen tab, it again has a banner 
running across and you can see that it is of course seasonal as well so it will change in a month or two but right now we have beach side listening and as we scroll down we can see that we have a card for new audiobooks and for new music so we'll scroll down a little bit more again cards for applications uh, Freegal music is a wonderful way to listen and either stream or download music and then we can come down a little bit more now this web page actually has more banners so we have one for a Freegal playlist we have one for new music and as I scroll down even farther new um, audiobooks as well let's go back up to the top because there is one more tab here which is go digital and as we look at going digital now these are again um, ways to look at books but in a digital sense so you may be reading them on your computer or on your tablet or on your phone and overdrive is an app that helps you with digital downloads um, but all of these help you with in this case ebooks as we scroll down e audiobooks scroll down some more uh, we get to read e magazines and e news which is very convenient we can watch e movies some of these are just you know kind of regular go to the theater movies but some of these are also uh, more like um, theater productions for example so you really want to check out these e-movies, documentaries, all sorts of things besides just the regular movie. And then you may want to decide that you want to listen to e-music. I've come back up to the top of books, movies, and music, and I could go to the left of that particular link to the logo and that would take me back to the home page or I can go to the right and select research and learning so let's do that and with research and learning we again have five tabs running across the top and then we have a filter bar that in this case is on the featured tab and it lets us select of course a key word but we could select subjects that we are interested in or we could uh, narrow down our search by a particular audience and again be sure to click update now as I scroll down just a little bit you'll see that on the left you can start your research just by typing a subject or a keyword or to the right of that are two important cards where we have homework help for kids and homework help for teens now the kids is really even preschool although it's more heavily based on kindergarten through say sixth grade whereas homework help for teens is more um, high school um, which leaves middle schoolers kind of trying to decide where they would like to go uh, sixth graders will probably still prefer to go to this homework help for kids it somewhat depends on their reading level um, their and their maturity uh, whereas um, older uh, middle schoolers say eighth graders would probably prefer to go to homework help for teens but again it's up to your particular student and what they would like to uh, use for a resource for their research to the right of featured we have the a to z list and as we come down a little bit you'll see that this is simply an alphabetical listing of all of our online resources and to further subdivide the list we have this A to Z heading where if I click on an M for example it would take me to the part of the list where all of the online resource names start with an M but let's come down just a little bit and look at the A list where the second choice here is academic one file uh, the underline here under the name shows you that that's the link to that particular online resource and then there's a description of what that resource contains and how it would be helpful and then there's even another link here that tells you more about academic one file I'm going to go to the right and scroll up just a tad 
because you can see that on the far right of each alphabetical section, there is a link to return to the top. So you don't find yourself just scrolling crazily to the top. If you're looking at, say, something in the W's, you just click on that link and come back up to the top. To the right of A to Z list, we have Browse Subjects, which happens to be one of my favorites. I guess it's because the pictures are really great. But let's say that you need a biography on a particular famous person. Well, you could come in here and look at the biography subject and click on View Resources. And this would take you to our online resources that in particular uh, really focus on biographies. To the right of Browse Subjects, we have Online Learning. And as we scroll down on Online Learning, you'll see that we have a lot of excellent resources. Universal Class, for example, has 500 self-paced and instructor-led courses where you watch videos that have transcripts. You may have a little homework, you may have quizzes, but at the end, you can earn continuing education units that some employers really encourage. There's a variety of subjects here that range from yoga to art and cooking to technology and other topics as well. So you do want to check out Universal Class. Uh, we also have LinkedIn Learning, which was formerly lynda.com. And this brings up an important point because lynda.com as a subscription service uh, required a monthly fee. Whereas if you use your library card to come to LinkedIn Learning through our website, it's all free. And this has a lot of business and technology type videos that are very well respected. And people come in here a lot when they want to find out something about their job that will help them do better with their job. So instead of paying a monthly subscription fee, bring your library card. Uh, Gale Courses is another uh, instructor-led course six, every six weeks. Then we also have Info-Based Learning Cloud, Learning Express Library, and even some language uh, learning type uh, resources as well. To the right of online learning, we have mobile apps. And the very first one at the top is the MCPL, Mid-Continent Public Library app. And you simply download it from your particular app store. And with this, you can look at your account, see what you've checked out, what you've placed on hold, um, events that you've registered for. And of course, it also gives you a link directly to this website, mymcpl.org. But a lot of great information with that app that are just on your phone or tablet. And then scrolling down, you see little cards that, again, will lead you to other uh, online apps that also have a uh, mobile app. Let's go to the right of Research and Learning and click on Events. Now, Events also has five tabs, and um, it has a filter bar, and several of these pages have a filter bar. So here you can find events by typing in a keyword. You can click on the start date and select the date that you want to start looking for events on a little calendar. You could also select a particular location, and right now our videos and Zoom meetings are considered our virtual branch, so you would want to select virtual branch. Uh, you could select from different subjects, the target audience, of course, and you can decide whether you want to include story times or not. Right now they're all virtual, but eventually we'll be back to uh, in-person uh, events as well. This first card, as I scroll down, has some permanent buttons for book groups, Midwest Genealogy Center events, Square One events, Story Times, Story Center events, and then you can view your registrations. Now the only thing about viewing your registrations is you need to be logged into the website. So let me scroll up because where you log in is in the very upper right my account and you simply put in your library card or even your uh, username and you put in your pin and then you're logged in and then you can see for example registrations here 
As we look at these tabs, we can look at this weekend. Now, the weekend is actually defined as Friday through Sunday. And again, it has a filter bar, so you could uh, filter this down. All events is all events within a season. So our seasons are three months long and they're just a month off of what we would consider a calendar quarter. So our seasons start with February and then it's February, March, April, and then it would be May, June, July, August, September, October, and then November, December, January. But you can see the three months worth of events. Again, there's a filter bar so that you can uh, narrow down the answers that you get. And then registrations. Again, you need to be logged into my account to be able to see those registrations, but you can see the events that you've signed up for. And let me go back because then you also can sign up for weekly email. And as I scroll down here a little bit, you would put in your name and your email address, and then you can select a subject. So these would be events based on a particular subject and even within a certain branch. And then you can say yes, and please send me my branch story times. When you submit that, then you can have a weekly event notification. So a really nice resource for you if that is something that you would like to have. Um, and those are the five tabs within events. To the right of the events link here is services. And as we look at services, we can see that it only has two tabs, either featured uh, services or all services. And again, it does have a filter bar. You can type in a keyword, you can look for a service type, or you can look at a target audience, which is different. Job seekers, parents and educators, small business, students, writers, and storytellers. So very different from some of the other target audience choices. And then don't forget to click update. And as we scroll down, you can see that we have everything from drive through windows to interlibrary loan to library by mail which helps our homebound customers receive their books and other resources they would like to have uh, clear down to Wi-Fi that uh, is available for checkout or uh, come to a parking lot and sit and use Wi-Fi. And then of course, all services are listed in alphabetical order. And it's quite a fascinating list and very extensive of all of the various um, services that we have and provide to those um, who have our library cards. To the right of that, we have library information. And there are five tabs here as well. Again, we have a featured tab and another way to get a library card. And of course, to find out about our different locations and hours using MCPL, frequently asked questions. We have library policies and holiday closings right here at the top how to contact MCPL. So you can contact us with your feedback. If you find something is confusing, let our web folks know. If you have questions that librarians can answer, maybe you need help with downloading OverDrive, whatever it is, be sure to contact us and talk to us. One of the um, interesting features here is library stories where you can share your library experience, how you grew up uh, reading books and what that has done for you or for your family. To the right of that tab, we have working with MCPL, and this is a little bit different because this is now employment opportunities. Again, a way to uh, support the library by donating. You can uh, put in proposals. Uh, if you have a particular service that you think would be helpful to the library, and of course, potential vendors. I and mean, this is a way to contact those particular departments. And then to the right of that about MCPL has not only our current news and um, ideas about where we are going, our future, but also about our past and our history. And so our mission and plan, our leadership team, as I go to the left here, our board of trustees, and even some library reports. Before we leave our tour today, 
let's go back up to the top of our web page here and go to our subsites and take a brief look at each of those. So above our logo, we have Midwest Genealogy Center, and it has its own links to resources and collections and events. It is a premier location and all of its collection has something to do with genealogy. So whether you have traced your family back several generations or whether you're just getting started, this is a wonderful resource for you where you can go, you can use all sorts of paper kinds of resources, but also online resources for free through the library that will help you find out more about your roots and your family. To the right of the Midwest Genealogy Center, we have Story Center, and it is also a lovely location. It's an old historic farmhouse with acreage around it that has been renovated, but its primary goal is to assist authors and storytellers. We even have certificates for storytelling, for example. And so this location in particular supports those who want to write and to speak and create stories for others. We even have uh, publishing possibilities. So we have the Espresso Book Machine where you can self-publish. It's a print-on-demand system or you can actually work with this location and go through Woodneath Press to have your novel, your story um, shared with others. Going back up to the top, Square One Small Business. Square One Small Business is for, well, small business people who are getting started, need help, uh, would like support, and we have specialists and, again, events and resources that will help answer your questions and get you started and maintain your business um, as you go through uh, your work. And we have the Kids tab. And with kids, we do want to emphasize early learning, early reading possibilities. So read a thousand books before kindergarten, for example. Dial a story. There are all sorts of events and possibilities for kids, but also for homeschool resources and parent and educator resources as well. Because early childhood literacy is amazingly important. And this is divided among early learners, school-age kids, and then of course their events, and even in the community, when it is possible, we have the reading rocket that goes out to preschools and lets youngsters come in and have essentially a story time, along with, of course, story times that will start being available soon. And if you are a parent or an educator, some resources for that as well. Tune in each week as we introduce new videos on a variety of tech topics. You can find us at 1 o'clock on Wednesday and Friday and 2 o'clock on Tuesday. Be sure to find us on Facebook at MCPL360, or if you prefer, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at MCPLMO, where you can find our MCPL Consumer Technology Resources Playlist.